Hello, and thank you for joining me today for this discussion on rugged AI edge computing. My name is Anish Katari with Sistel. Sistel is a leading manufacturer of rugged computing products and solutions with over 30 years of experience in providing advanced computer technologies purpose-built for mission success to defense, oil and gas, and manufacturing enterprises worldwide. Today's presentation is all about rugged AI edge computing solutions and the critical role they play in supporting next generation defense requirements and applications, and really enabling those next gen AI capabilities. I'm gonna spend some time today discussing the benefits and challenges associated with edge deployed AI, talk through key considerations for edge deployed AI, including technologies and ruggedization, and conclude by presenting some example use cases, uh, really trying to tie some of these themes together. So let's start by talking about the promise of edge deployed AI. As vehicles and platforms and soldiers are becoming more and more densely censored, the, the amount of data being presented to the warfighter at any given time can be overwhelming. AI takes the burden off the operator <clears throat> and moves past the limits of human capacities for these mission critical data processing workloads. Uh, the, the application possibilities are of course immense whether it's optionally manned or unmanned platforms, such as robotic combat vehicles, robotic wingmen, unmanned underwater uh, vessels, cyber defense, EW, facial recognition, target detection and recognition, uh, counter UAS, predictive maintenance. Really the areas where AI can accelerate and enhance capabilities is, is incredible. Building on this data-rich foundation is the DOD's concept of Joint All-Demand Command and Control, or JADC2, where the ability to achieve decision dominance is predicated on harnessing the power of machines and employing AI, machine learning, neural network capabilities. So the concept is a unified network, so you can achieve the idea of any sensor, any shooter. And the only way this really works is if you have strong local networks where you can conduct as much of your AI processing uh, at the edge. So as General Murray says here in this quote, we won't have wide open pipes to push data in contested environments with restricted bandwidth. So how do you succeed? And, and this is where AI computing at the edge comes into play. So let's talk about some of the benefits of computing at the edge. Uh, so first and foremost is reliability. In a contested or degraded environment, you simply cannot count on a cloud-based or large network-based AI solution. The, uh, the computing has to be done on premise to ensure maximum uptime. And, and we're gonna talk a little bit later about how ruggedization plays such a key role in this idea of reliability. A, another key factor is latency. Low latency is vital. So take a combat vehicle application such as hostile fire detection. It is naturally an imperative to rapidly identify and track an incoming signature. So real-time speed is required. And the only way to achieve that and minimize your latency is through on-premise edge computing. Uh, bandwidth is another one. So using the spectrum more efficiently and effectively by decreasing network load is critical, especially in a contested restricted bandwidth environment. Data consumption and running your processing and inferencing locally decreases high bandwidth load while increasing response time. So if we talked about some of the benefits, now, now let's look at some of the challenges. Taking data center AI performance and capability and successfully integrating it into an edge computing system is extremely challenging. Uh, running AI and ML workloads at the edge requires high performance computing, which can use significant processing and memory resources. So this can have cost uh, as well as cooling uh, implications. High performance electronics are high wattage. Managing the thermals of your system in extreme conditions uh, is, is a really large challenge here um, in this space. Related to that is the overall environmental conditions. Deployed hardware is subject to the most austere environments on the planet and has to be ruggedized accordingly to survive. Finally, um, managing your system swap is critical, size, weight, and power. Space claims and power budgets can be very tight in enduring platforms, which may or may not have been originally built 
with AI types of mission sets or workloads in mind. And, and adding to that, next-gen platforms are increasingly more consolidated, smaller, uh, especially when you start talking about autonomous vehicles, uh, which can range further than manned platforms. So they will be subject to even harsher environments, uh, which a hardware supplier like Sistel has to account for. Companies like Sistel have to be extremely innovative in design and manufacturing to successfully, successfully manage this fundamental push-pull between integrating higher and higher performance electronics that have correspondingly higher and higher wattages into more and more swap optimized hardware packages to meet end user requirements. So we've uh, touched on the benefits and challenges inherent in edge deployed AI. And in discussing the challenges of computing at the edge, there are several key considerations I wanna talk about in how Systel helps solve these challenges. So first is the enabling technologies. The image on this slide depicts an important area of AI known as intelligent video anal analytics. <clears throat> the same technology used to display pixels on a screen can also be used to analyze those pixels on another screen or a video feed or a picture. And th this is important for applications such as facial recognition. With the right rugged edge computing hardware backbone, AI applications such as intelligent video analytics are force multipliers in combat. So what is the enabling technology behind this? The major technology component uh, driving the AI explosion is of course the GPU. Parallel processing incredible never ending streams of data, both reliably and accurately to offload the cognitive burden from the warfighter and allow machines to provide actionable intelligence and decisions in real time requires the incredible capabilities that GPUs offer. GPUs are very effective at training deep learning models and running those models to inference at the edge. FPGAs are uh, also an extremely powerful enabling technology. They're customizable hardware devices that can be very specifically programmed and optimized for specific types of architectures, such as various types of neural networks. From a hardware supplier perspective, FBA, FPGA boards can come with integrated video capture, making them a swap and thermally optimized solution. There are challenges with either approach. Uh, so GPUs run hot and FPGAs need to be programmed, um, to put it simply. And, and that can be quite complex. GPUs are absolutely the predominant solution for edge AI applications. And uh, here's a visualiz here is a visualization of why that is. So looking at performance metrics for CPUs versus GPUs, it's no contest. GPUs blow CPUs out of the water every time if the task at hand is to process massive amounts of data as quickly as possible, which is generally the case of the, uh, of the types of AI applications we've been discussing. Um, on this slide, you'll see a couple of charts. The chart on the right shows the results of a comparison study to train a deep learning model to translate the German language dictionary to the English language dictionary over 13 epochs or a number of times the model worked through the entire data set. So uh, if you can see here, dual high-end uh, Xeon processors, you can see on the left, took about 15 days. A Pascal architecture GPU, a single GPU took 18 hours and a Tesla V100 GPU took six hours. The latest NVIDIA Ampere-based A100 GPU is about two or eight times faster, two to eight times faster than the V100. So you can imagine how much faster that GPU could achieve this task. Other key technologies to complete the edge computing picture include high bandwidth networking, high-speed data buses, uh, such as PCIe Gen 4, and full motion video capture and encode. And we'll be touching on these at the end uh, with uh, the example use cases. Integrating AI enabling technology into a computer um, isn't too difficult, but when the requirement is to integrate that technology into a computer that will be deployed into an extreme environment and it has to reliably perform at 100% load over and over again, that is a significant challenge. Edge deployed AI, requires rugged hardware, hardware that is hardened 
to not only survive, but reliably perform in the harshest environments. Taking into account when designing and qualifying hardware systems for environmental and rugged, and rugged build standards means taking into account things like operating and storage temperature, shock and vibration, altitude, humidity, sand and dust, rain and fluid ingress, um, explosive atmosphere, flammability, vehicle power, EMI, EMC for ground-based, airborne, and shipboard applications. Any number of, uh, of, of rugged considerations um, have to be taken into account every step of the way. So this list here of the various mill standards um, shows the, the common standards that cover these items and many more. As a more tangible example of this, I've, I've, I've got a chart here outlining the extensive environmental and rugged build standards that Systel has brought to bear for one of our newer rugged AI uh, edge computers called Kite Strike, which integrates an NVIDIA Jetson AGX Xavier system on module. Okay, so I want to further highlight four of the key ruggedization areas for successful edge deployed AI, and certainly four areas that Sysel focuses heavily on. Hardware suppliers have to account for all of these items, and of course, many more. Engineering systems that can withstand rigorous shock and vibration across all three axes is all about experience. Um, it's all about having a deep fundamental understanding of the conditions and system architecture. It's knowing every component on every board and how that will react under heavy and sustained G-force load, and then knowing how to effectively secure those components within the system. Similarly, platform requirements often demand fully sealed embedded edge computers resistant to sand, dust, water, and moisture. For the supplier, getting this right is a challenge in and of itself and can sometimes also be viewed against manufacturing, serviceability, and upgradability considerations. So not just a challenge of sealing your system, but also a challenge of sealing it and still accounting for ease of manufacturing, serviceability, upgradability. So maybe your chassis is comprised of multiple pieces for ease of servicing and upgrade, which is critical and vital for, for customers. Getting your gasketing and other sealing mechanisms right then becomes even harder and, 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 and still has that level of crucial importance that is required for the customer requirement. On the power and EMI side, meeting wide input voltage ranges of various vehicles to the applicable mill or DO standard is a big consideration, as well as the overall power budget. How are you achieving your power sequencing? How do you get this right in a system with, say, COTS commercial components that require heaters for sub-zero operating temperatures? These are things that, uh, that we really focus on and that we have to get right. And then, of course, properly filtering that dirty vehicle input power and effectively shielding against electromagnetic magnetic interference uh, and noise. And again, all of this comes back, all of these considerations come back to ensuring system reliability to support and enable the benefits and promise of AI in these mission critical applications. Um, and then onto the thermal management side, which we've touched on a couple of times now, and I really can't stress how critical this is. The most significant item in AI embedded edge computing system design is accommodating for the power and heat demands of powerful electronics. Requirements for edge deployed AI capability, complete with sensor fusion, software analytics, and big data throughput, all in a rapid decision cycle, call for very high wattage uh, processing power. AI and autonomous missions that rely on powerful edge computing demand uh, reliability in extreme operating temperatures. And this can range from minus 40 C to uh, plus 71 C uh, and above. Systel really spends a lot of time on this through analysis and validation efforts, utilizing advanced thermal management techniques to make sure our systems work. We design our systems for worst case scenarios, assuming 100% continuous operation at highest ambient temperature in closed cavity steel air conditions. 
I want to briefly touch on a couple of additional key considerations. First is high density computing and converged infrastructure. Converged infrastructure is a way of structuring a system, grouping multiple components into a single optimized computing package. Sysdale's computers are designed and purpose-built to reduce the demand on platform swap C by integrating multiple ISR ecosystem-specific network, sensor systems, and computer technologies, all of this into a small form factor rugged computer. So basically what we're trying to do is reduce the size and complexity of the historical tactical computing stack um, as represented by the image on the, uh, the far left into a single LRU solution as represented by the image on the far right of one of our products called Ravenstrike. And, and we've talked about the swap challenges of edge deployed AI, and this is a key factor in solving those challenges. Next, I wanna talk about open systems and MOSA, which stands for Modular Open Systems Approaches. I've, uh, I've heard it said that MOSA is the key to innovation. <clears throat> and there is a massive push to and prioritization of modular open systems approaches across the services. It, it is an imperative going forward and provides significant benefits in costs, schedules, risk mitigation efforts, uh, competition, and innovation. It, it's, it's really a benefit for, for the taxpayer. And, and as a taxpayer, I, I think it's very important. Um, and, and it's clear that the defense community and companies like ourselves are all uh, pushing very hard in this direction. It's vital to have open architectures that focus on open standards, interoperability, portability, uh, and modularity. So with an immediate future technology focus on AI, it really becomes critical for defense programs to keep up with commercial technological advances uh, by advancing capabilities that allow rapid adoption and rich upgrade pads of new technologies um, in systems that are built on open architectures. And uh, Sysdel solutions are, are OSA, MOSA, uh, SAMOA compliant and ready. I'm, uh, I'm speaking to you today, or at the time of this recording, from Sysdale's headquarters in Sugarland, Texas. Sugarland is a suburb of Houston. Um, I was born and raised here, and, and other than going to, to the University of Texas for college, I've lived, uh, I've lived here my entire life. Basketball has always been my favorite sport since I can remember, and so naturally, the Houston Rockets are my team. I grew up rooting for the 90s Rockets teams, uh, starring Hakeem Olajuwon, who's pictured here. Hakeem was a center and played in an era that featured a lot of incredible centers. Uh, it was much more of a big man's game back then. And, you know, Hakeem wasn't the tallest or the strongest at his position, but he had grown up in Nigeria playing soccer and handball. His competitive edge was his footwork, his agility, his ball handling skills. This image is from the uh, 1995 Western Conference Finals, Rockets and Spurs. David Robinson, whose back is pictured in this image, uh, won the MVP that year. He's in the picture here, uh, being spun around like a top by Hakeem. And, and this is what happened the entire series, uh, which the Rockets won in six. Hakeem dominated the series. And the Rockets went on to sweep the Magic in the finals and, and win their second uh, consecutive NBA title. Robinson was a great player, but he just could not contend with Akeem's footwork, his pump fakes, his ball handling, his basketball IQ. That foundation that Akeem had gave him a competitive edge. Similarly, I firmly believe the foundation of successful edge deployed AI is the computer hardware infrastructure, and, and more specifically, the rugged computer hardware infra infrastructure. Sysdel is laser focused on all of the considerations we've discussed today, enabling technologies, ruggedization, hyperconvergence, open systems, COTS technologies and roadmaps, not to mention the end user mission and problem sets applications, environments, and platform ecosystems and architectures. We, we strongly believe 
this total picture view is the best and, and you know, really the only way to ensure supporting successful edge deployed AI with rugged edge computing solutions. I'd like to conclude today by, by looking at some example use cases, bringing together the various themes and concepts we've discussed so far. These are based on actual customer solutions and deployments, but of course, uh, you know, I won't be disclosing any sensitive information. And I also wanna stress that the images displayed are intended to be representative uh, only. So the first use case is a multi-sensor combat vehicle integrating Sysdale's Ravenstrike or Hawkstrike systems with NVIDIA embedded or Quadro GPUs. So for example, Sysdale has integrated Quadro RTX 5000 Turing GPUs in the Ravenstrike and we'll be moving towards the new Ampere technology here going forward. So the workflow here is a system like Ravenstrike serving as a single LRU mission computer, ingesting various sensor streams and formats on the vehicle. This could be CoExpress, Camera Link, SDI, Analog, RS-170, uh, GigiVision. Uh, the computer Ravenstrike runs the processing and exploitation of these video streams hosting multiple AI and machine learning algorithms. The processed information is then disseminated on, disseminated on board the vehicle to local displays for action and or sent over the various local or broader networks uh, with high bandwidth, high speed internet, ethernet. All of this capability rests in a single LRU swap optimized fully rugged system. With products like Ravenstrike, Sysdel is taking COTS technologies and deploying them into extreme operating temperature conditions. Uh, the only way to do this successfully is with advanced thermal management techniques, pushing the components past their limits with high reliability and high MTBF <clears throat> through efficiently engineered heating and cooling solutions all resident within the system. A, uh, another example is an airborne ISR application with Sysdel's Kite Strike solution. Uh, Kite Strike is the product we looked at several slides ago with the list of various uh, rugged and environmental uh, mill standards. Uh, Kite Strike integrates the NVIDIA Jetson AGX Xavier system on module. And the Xavier is a remarkable piece of AI technology, providing the best performance per watt on the market today. Sysdel is able to integrate that in a single LRU with sensor ingest, networking, storage, and robust IO capabilities. Again, the system has to be fully rugged with advanced thermal management techniques to survive the austere environmental conditions uh, it will be in. And this system specifically is ideal for extremely swap optimized space claims, as you would expect to find in rotary wing or, or UAV airborne ISR or UGV, uh, you know, ground-based applications, pushing edge computing and edge deployed AI to new frontiers. <clears throat> the, uh, the final example use case I have involves ground vehicle SIGINT and EW applications. So a rugged server such as Sysdel's IPC4472 for you high density system needs to be configured with extremely high performance computing and high speed networking. Uh, a system like 4472 here, we, we configure with uh, up to four NVIDIA, Tesla or Ampere based GPUs uh, with NVLink. So extremely, extremely fast um, uh, networking, uh, bandwidth um, and processing capabilities. And uh, this really enables uh, using something like NVLink with the GPUs enables memory and resource sharing, allowing for even faster processing, uh, coupled with dual Xeon CPUs and 100 gigi networking. All of this capability is needed to host various algorithms, such as <clears throat> such as AI aided digital signal processing. So that entails monitoring and processing wideband radio frequency signals, and really the entire spectrum at the edge. 
Um, an example application of this is speech detection and speech to text translation. That concludes Sistel's presentation. Uh, I want to thank uh, the Millinero team for putting together this uh, fantastic tech summit and um, graciously allowing Sistel to, uh, to present and participate. I'd like to thank uh, everyone who is uh, watching this recording and participating in this tech summit uh, for their time. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, feel free to reach out to myself or anyone at Sistel anytime. Um, we are very, very focused and very passionate about AI computing at the edge, and would love to talk about it anytime. Uh, you can always visit uh, Sistel at, uh, at our website, sistelusa.com, or email our sales team at sales at sistelusa.com. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the summit.